Welcome to Electron Line. The key to any equipment, including satellites, is the power you can provide it. If you run out of power, the satellite is simply dead. And so you need two components, one that can provide an additional amount of energy, and that's done through the solar panels, and then you need something to at least capture some of that energy and store it in case there's periods where you don't have any solar radiation, in such a case where you're flying behind the planet and it's completely dark and everything still needs to continue to function. So the solar panels produced a lot of power. 820 watts in 1973 was a lot of power that you get out of those solar panels. There was a problem, however. The maximum temperature that the solar panels could withstand was 115 degrees centigrade. And as we've seen before, at the location where Mercury is at, the temperature can each easily reach 400 degrees centigrade during the daytime, which would destroy the solar panels. So the solar panels had to be protected by angling them, and so there was a range in angle from 0 to 76 degrees, so that you could increase or decrease the amount of radiation falling on the panels, so that on one side, the panels would get warm from the radiation, but on the other side, they would cool down by radiating it out into space, so you can have a nice balance and keep it below the allowed temperature. The solar radiation, remember, at perihelion of Mercury is about four and a half times as strong as it is on the Earth, so it's definitely something you need to contend with. So the panels were adjustable, and so was the high-gain antenna, and so they used both of them by changing the angle as well to take to, uh, to react to the solar radiation in such a way that you could control the attitude of the spacecraft. So you can make minor adjustments by changing the angle of the antenna, by changing the angle of the panels, and therefore changing the attitude of the spacecraft. If we keep in mind that the camera required 67 watts to operate, which was more than the other instruments on board, how long would you be able to operate the camera on the amount of energy you could store in the battery itself? And the battery could store 20 amp hours and it was a 39 volt battery called the nickel cadmium battery. So if we take the equation where the power is equal to the current times the voltage, therefore a current can be produced, uh, or a current would be required, I should say, when we take the power of the camera divided by the voltage of the battery of 1.72 amps. So it would require 1.72 amps to operate the camera at 67 watts, with a 20 amp hour storage capability of the battery, we could do that for 11.6 hours. So the battery had plenty of juice, as we would call it, in uh, more classical terms, to keep things running while there was no uh, energy coming from the solar panel. So definitely, if the highest uh, demand equipment on board could run for 11.6 hours on the battery, you were in pretty good shape. And of course, that would only be necessary for short periods of time when you would be uh, uh, shielded from the solar radiation by the, the planet Mercury and the pass by at very high velocities wouldn't take that long and therefore you had plenty of battery, plenty of electricity in the battery in order to operate all your equipment for those periods. And the solar panels, even at low angle uh, settings, you would still get plenty of power from those solar panels to run your entire system. So they were in good shape and they did not have any major functionality problems with the equipment, except that um, they did have problems with the heaters of the camera, which normally draw some power to keep it warm, but in relation to that, they kept the camera running, so they kept a continuous 67 watt draw on the system the entire time to make sure the cameras would not malfunction. And that's the power package of our Mariner 10 satellite.